Hey everyone, this is Daniel and in today's video we're going to finally answer this question which is where exactly is Microsoft Forms data saved? Because it's not as intuitive as you might think it is. The first thoughts that come to people's mind is, is it SharePoint or OneDrive? Is it Dataverse? And honestly, it's neither one of them. So it's not very intuitive. And then we'll finally end with talking a little bit about Viva Pulse because guess what? Even Viva Pulse saves its information over there. So stick around because this is very important, especially from an Office 365 administrative standpoint. But first, here's my intro video. So as a quick overview of Microsoft Forms, this is a quick and easy way to go ahead and build forms or quizzes, more like a WYSIWYG. WYSIWYG stands for what you see is what you get. In fact, one of the most popular users of Microsoft Forms is actually school teachers because they can go ahead and build quizzes really fast over here. So this is what Microsoft Forms is, basically a WYSIWYG. But one of the common misconceptions is that it is actually stored in one of the data sources that we're familiar with. Two popular ones being SharePoint OneDrive and Dataverse and it's neither one of them. Now, SharePoint and OneDrive is where you might go and see that Excel spreadsheet get automatically created because if you've got a very powerful form, like for example, this is something that I have, it's got 64 responses. When I go and take a look at the responses, if I go and do open in Excel, um, it'll actually open it up in Excel, basically going and saving me that exported version of all these results. But sometimes you can also go and have this Excel saved in the backend SharePoint, especially if your form is shared by a group in an M365 group. But that is after the fact, not real time. Real time means you've gone ahead and built a form, you're going ahead and say, sharing it with people. When they're filling all of this information in, at that point in time, it is not saved in that Excel spreadsheet sitting in your SharePoint and OneDrive. And it is definitely not stored in any Dataverse tables in any specific environment. It's not even over there. Where it is saved, and some people are surprised by hearing about this, is actually your Exchange Online service. And here is the official Microsoft documentation about that. So as we go, and by the way, the link of this is in the description below. Uh, right over here, it says that content stored in Exchange Online mailboxes for e-discovery. And this is why it's sometimes hard to find this information because this Microsoft Learning document is very geared towards how e-discovery works for Exchange mailboxes. But it also gives you a full description of what all is stored in that Exchange mailbox. And first on the list is Microsoft Forms. So it says, Forms and responses to all forms are stored in files that are attached to email messages and stored in a hidden folder in the mailbox of the user who created the forms. Now it just doesn't stop over here because a change was made to how the data was stored and it happened right around the 2020 time, the year 2020. And so let's continue reading. It says forms created before April of 2020 were stored as PDF files but forms created after 2020 were stored in JSON files. Now, I cannot find any pure documentation to say why this is, but based on all of the other reading that I do, the e-discovery was the main reason why it was transferred over from PDF to JSON because JSON is an easier way to go ahead and actually get information from. And e-discovery through purview from the Microsoft 365 compliance is the reason why this change was made because now you are able to successfully do e-discovery of all the forms that have been filled up to see what were the results over there. This, I believe, was one of the biggest reasons why the switch was happened. Switch over from PDF over to JSON. But either of those two formats, whatever the change was, they always stored in your mailbox. So that is the very important situation of how this happens. But, but I do want to point out one thing. Right over here, it says that this data is located in the application, specifically folder called application data root folder. And that is the global unique identified, the GUID. And this is GUID over here. Now this is a very static one, which is actually available in your mailbox and in my mailbox. So just to prove that to myself, I directly went into my Microsoft 365 and into the admin center. In my admin center, I went all the way down into my compliance under the admin center. In the compliance, it opens up another tab. It actually takes me into purview. In my purview, I went and did a content search. The content search, I created a new search. In the new search, you know, gave it a simple name, test, went to the next. In the next, I actually toggled on for exchange because I wanted to go and get the exchange 
for a very specific user. And in the user, I went ahead and did a search for my name. All right, so I actually wanted to pull all the exchange information directly from my name. So I went and found it, go ahead and register for myself, did it done. Basically, this is the purview thing that I was building for myself. So if I now go back all the way to purview and go back all the way to content search, I actually went ahead and did one for myself, right? Went ahead and created the same thing that I just showed you, went ahead and did an export and it was able to go ahead and give me all the information about my mailbox. And to take it a step further, I actually went ahead and exported all of this data. So the data basically looks like this. Right over here, you've got an exchange folder and there's all the PST files, but you've also got a manifest. It gives you an overview in an XML format. But the ones that I was specifically looking for was this information here. It says that uh, the data is located in this folder called application data folder in your PST, basically in your mailbox. And after it's in that folder, there should be this globally unique identified, which is GUID. And that's the number over here. That's the GUID number. So I was searching for these two things. So the first thing, let's go and see if I can even find this application root folder, right? So I went and highlighted this, so I can do a search. Um, in my Exchange Mailbox export, if I go ahead and open up that CSV, which I just got it over here, uh, if I do a search for it, application data root folder, um, I start to see all of this information. You see, it is basically showing my mailbox. It is saying that's the primary one, and in there is this hidden application folder, right there, application data location. But the other thing that I wanted to search for is this grid. So if I just go and highlight this, I wanted to uh, copy it, go back into that OneNote, and now over here, I'll just do a search for that GUID as well. And when I do that, see right over here, right after that application data root, you can actually see that GUID over here. And this was confirmation to me is that that documentation to this day is still accurate. This documentation is still accurate because I was able to find that mailbox in my PST file, the Outlook mailbox PST file. And in that PST file, there's actually a subfolder with this GUID and that still exists. So this is confirmation that nothing has changed and this is very accurate that your Microsoft Forms does exist in this location and that's still ready to stay. Now you can always go and export that into an Excel spreadsheet or you can go and get a Power Automate flow and take the data and save it somewhere else. You, know, you can do all of that, but the root location of where your Microsoft Forms data is stored is in this location. I finally figured out where it is and I wanted to make sure you also have this accurate information. So now we have a good understanding of where the Microsoft Forms data is saved. So what I wanna do is now switch gears and talk about Viva Pulse. And I know what some of you are thinking, is like, whoa, 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 Daniel, slow down. How does Viva, the Viva suite, specifically Viva Pulse, how does this fall into the overall realm of Microsoft Forms? I mean, they're two separate things, right? Well, no. Well, first of all, before I get there, let me just give you a quick overview of Viva Pulses. Like I said, Viva Pulse is part of the overall Viva suite, but I like the way that it says, it says Viva Pulse, takes a quick rapid employee feedback to take actions to improve knowledge. Basically, if you're at the manager and a high level and you just want a quick understanding of how your employees are thinking, reacting, behaving, Viva Pulse is a good way to do that and it has direct integration into Microsoft Teams. So for example, if I wanna go and do something like team success, um, it's a two minutes one to complete, already gives me some good flavors of how the forms I wanna fill. Uh, once I go and do that, I can go and click on next, and then I can go and select some people over here. Keep in mind, you've got to at least have five people, and then after you've gone and put that, you can go and send the pulse. It also directly works inside Microsoft Teams. But the important thing about Viva Pulse as well, and if you haven't kind of already noticed that it is building a form, well, the Viva Pulse actually goes ahead and saves the data in Microsoft Forms. And here's the documentation of the Viva Pulse data residency. And it mentions over here is that yes, Viva Pulse research backend templates and customized templates. Well, the templates are stored in Azure Cosmos DB, the one that we just created, the template over here, the one that we created, those templates are stored in Azure Cosmos DB. However, the Pulse instances authored in Viva Pulses are stored in Microsoft Forms along with all the responses to the Pulse. The data is in Microsoft Forms, which means it's in Microsoft Forms, which means Microsoft Forms data is in Exchange, which means Viva Pulse data is also stored in Exchange. So do you just understand the importance of how we should know where Microsoft Forms data is stored? Because guess what? It even affects Viva Pulse. So if you watch this entire video, congratulations, because that just makes you one of the few people who truly understand the whole architecture of Microsoft Forms, specifically where the data is stored. And now you and I know it's actually stored in your Exchange mailbox in a hidden folder over there. And you and I actually went and confirmed that as well. 
Now, if any of you are interested about Viva Pulse, I'm going to do a whole separate video deep diving on Viva Pulse over there because it does resemble Microsoft Forms. So it's very important that you see how Viva Pulse works over there as well. And it's beautiful integration into Microsoft Teams. So hopefully this video was useful to you, especially if you're an Office 365 IT admin. This really takes your knowledge to the next level and it's important that you understand all of that purely from the storage location and from the e-discovery standpoint. Hopefully this video was useful to you and as always, keep using Microsoft Forms. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment? Either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.